All right, this is a really exciting week for me as we have a bunch of really cool updates happening with the Everything Presence Lite and the EP1, plus some other stuff that I really wanted to give you an update on. This will probably be a pretty relaxed and just a talking head style video, so feel free to minimize and do something else if you like. But we have new features on the Everything Presence Lite, as well as a big update to the EP1, big logistics improvements, and maybe a deal or two for you all in this video. And all of this stuff has all been in the works for months and months and kind of just all completed this week, which is why it's really cool, especially for me. So let's get into it. One of the biggest feedbacks that we were getting in our reviews of the Everything Presence Lite was that people loved the hardware and the new case and all of the sensors that you get in Home Assistant and that it was fully assembled and all of that good stuff that we did. But they found that setting zones in Home Assistant was really difficult or tedious, which I totally agree with because there is no kind of native way in either ESP Home or Home Assistant to kind of handle these zones easily because Ultimately, zones are a bunch of X and Y coordinates, which to humans just really aren't that intuitive. So what I did was to actually build a tool that allows you to set zones visually by drawing them. The zone configurator is an add-on that is for Home Assistant and it also works as a standalone Docker container that when you open it, you can visually see the real-time tracking information of up to three targets inside of your space as they move around. And if you click and drag an area in the canvas, it will actually start drawing out a zone for you and you can add up to four zones, of course. You can also resize any of the zones and drag them around or even right click to delete them. And then once you actually want to save these zones and send them to Home Assistant, you just hit save and that's it. Now, this is a pretty new tool and it's not perfect, so I'm 100% sure that there will be bugs. But as a first release, I'm really, really happy with the feedback so far on this tool in the few weeks that it's been out. And it's been really, really positive. And I think this is an absolute game changer for setting zones. And for me, this makes setting zones so, so much easier for everyone. And just being able to visually see the tracking information as people move around and being able to draw zones on as you want them and see them visually in your space is so so, so cool and I'm really, really happy with this first iteration of the tool. I'm sure there are lots of really good additions we can make to it, uh, but as a first release, it's so cool and I would actually love to hear your feedback on how you find it down in the comments and we can try and improve it from there. Inside of the zone configurator, actually, if you look closelier, there is a drop down to change the zone type, which is where another one of our big features comes in, which is occupancy masks. And this is, was a feature that was submitted by Lars and Joao on GitHub. And basically it works in the same way as zones inside of the configurator, where you simply draw out the occupancy mask, except instead of it detecting which zone you are in, an occupancy mask will actually block or mask any detection occurring in that zone and the sensor will ignore it. This is really useful, for example, if you have a ceiling fan that triggers the sensor, you can draw an occupancy mask just around the fan and block it from triggering the sensor. Or another really cool one actually was someone who had a server rack in the corner of the room that was being detected by its fans. So they wanted to just block out the whole server rack. So this came in really, really handy for that type of thing. One of the other feedbacks we were getting a lot was that this is really cool, the Everything Presence Light, but because of the way the zones works, it means that I have to have the sensor like flat against a wall with the other walls running in parallel. And then I can't really put it at an angle in the corner because then the zones won't work properly. And so what Joao once again submitted as a new feature was the ability to set the angle of installation for a room. This means that you can put it in the corner of a room at say a 45 degree angle, change the angle in the settings and through the magic of trigonometry, which I never believed my maths teacher in school when he said that it would be an important thing to learn. But now finally 15 years later, I wish I had listened to him when I had to review the code for this feature. The sensor will now work and calculate these zones for when you set it at an angle and it'll all work perfectly. If you actually take a look at the zone configurator, it even shows you visually the angle that you have your everything presence light set at. 
It does take a little moment for your head to kind of figure out what's happening since the zones are still set in straight rectangles. But after a few moments, you do get the hang of what is happening and this is a really, really, really cool addition. We also had some great little things too, like Scott for refactoring the detection logic to make it better and fix a bunch of bugs. I also added pre-built CO2 firmware. So if you install the CO2 module that we make for your light or your EP1, you can install that firmware for it straight from the user guide without having to modify ESP home config and that kind of thing. We also added a bunch of documentation around setting zones, as well as a bunch of other little fixes. Thank you to everyone who contributed these on the GitHub. Really, really awesome. Moving on for the light for a second, this is actually a really, really cool day for me in particular because we just literally received our first batch of EP1s which have had the full injection molded treatment like we did with the light, which I am really, really happy about. And so many of you have been asking me for when the EP1 is coming back because you wanted to buy more. Well, here it is and you can now finally buy it as of this video going up with the fully injection molded case. It's stuck. It's so well protected in there because of the new foam. Ah, here it is. <laughs> so as with the light, we have the fully injection molded case for the EP1 now, since the feedback was really great with the light and we knew we had to give the EP1 the same treatment. It also comes with the nice right angled braided USB-C cable. It's fully assembled from the factory so you don't have to put it together yourself anymore. It's also CE and UKCA certified which is really important. And of course it comes in this lovely matte black box with the foam padding to protect your sensor in transit which is kind of important when you have a delicate sensor sitting right here. This is actually a really cool kind of moment for me because if you remember two years ago when we started shipping the EP1 back in the beginning, it used to ship like this, where is one? So if you remember two years ago, we actually used to ship the EP1 way back in the beginning in this kind of really basic box with the 3D printed case and all of the parts were just like inside and you kind of had to assemble them yourself, which don't get me wrong, I wouldn't have changed a thing back in the beginning. This was really essential for us back then. But seeing it turn now from this into this complete package with everything included and the nice packaging is really, really cool for me personally. And of course the light sits alongside that too. So if you want to pick up the brand new EP1 or the light, we've just done a big restock of both of them. I'll put the link down in the description. Though do watch this video for the rest of the duration of this video first before you go and order it as I don't want you to miss out on some important details that are coming up in just a second. But yeah, so, so happy that the EP1 is now complete and ready to go. Actually, I wasn't intending on talking about this, but on the subject of both of these, a question a lot of you ask me is, which one should I get? Should I get the light or should I get the EP1? Or sometimes you get confused as to why the EP1 exists when the light is cheaper and what's the PIR for if the millimeter wave is better and all really, really great questions. And it's certainly something we are looking to improve on by adding better descriptions and comparison charts on the website for. But to answer the question, these aren't really for the same purpose. I mean, they both are millimeter wave sensors, but they are optimized for different scenarios because not all millimeter wave sensors are the same. And it's really important to remember that some sensors are better, better suited to some tasks and other sensors are better suited to other tasks. Looking specifically at these two, the EP1 was always, and it still is, designed to be the best sensor at pure static presence detection, which means detecting you when you are really still, like sitting on a sofa or even sleeping in your bed. And it does that really, really well once you dial in the settings. But it does mean that it's lacking zone capabilities like the light has, for example, which on the other hand, the light is optimized for target tracking in real time and for zone capabilities, but it's not quite as good at static presence such as sleeping, and it doesn't have any of the sensitivity controls. It's still pretty good at detecting you when you are really still, but it's not for sleeping, I wouldn't really say it's optimized for. But then typically in a bedroom, you don't really need zones and you want static presence as your top priority. 
So you can see that they actually complement each other really, really well when you're talking about a whole house setup. So if you want static presence, then the EP1 is best. And if you want zones for a bigger space or a space where you move around in, then the light is best. Unfortunately, there is no sensor out there right now that does everything perfectly until you start getting into like the really, really expensive sensors. But hopefully that does help in make a decision. It's also worth mentioning that light has swappable sensors so that that's one of the big reasons is for that is that we know that not every sensor does everything perfectly well. So if you want to try out a bunch of different sensors and see which one works well for you, then the light is compatible with a bunch of different sensors so you can try them out and see which one suits your needs. The EP1 also has the PIR sensor, of course, which people still get wrong about to this day as to why that's in there. It's not really for speed, which everyone thinks it is, and it kind of was in the beginning, but I can tell you that having spoken with and helped literally thousands of customers with their installs, over the last two years, I think I have a lot of great real world experience with Millimeter Wave now. The PIR actually affords a lot of flexibility when it comes to automations. And I'm really, really glad that it's in there for the best static presence. And when it comes to the EP1, I still wouldn't change that. And we haven't changed that, of course, because the PIR is still in there knowing what I know now. So that's the reason for the PIR. Okay, next big thing that we just finalized also, and I realize how boring this is, so I do apologize. But one of the biggest things that I've been hearing from you guys since the very beginning is that shipping is still a bit too high for some of you. And for you EU customers, you have still been getting hit by taxes at customs, which some of you were unaware of before ordering. And because of the amazing continued support, we are able to invest back into fixing these issues. So for those of you in the EU, we can now collect those taxes at checkout and we will pay those taxes directly to your country, which does a few things. Firstly, it means that you aren't gonna get hit with an unexpected additional cost, but most importantly, it saves on the huge admin fee that carriers were charging you at customs as we do not have any admin fee. So unfortunately, there is no way of avoiding the taxes. Your country is always gonna get its taxes one way or another, but the admin fee was a killer. Like sometimes I was seeing say taxes of 10 euros, but the admin fee was like 20, 25 euros, which is absolutely absurd. And I totally get that it was really annoying. So that should now be fixed. Please do note that you do need to keep your order under 150 euros, excluding shipping or VAT, which is the EU threshold. Basically, if you see a breakdown of taxes at checkout, then you're good. And if you don't see a breakdown, then it means that you're over the limit. So either split it into two orders or you will need to pay taxes as normal at customs. This also means that deliveries will get to you much faster because it won't get held at customs for paperwork anymore, which is a huge double win for us. And speaking of shipping, we've also been able to massively reduce shipping costs by negotiating better deals to a lot of destinations, particularly in the EU, where a lot of destinations are now, in some cases, more than half the price that they were. France, for example, goes from 13 euros down to just six euros, very similar for Germany and the Netherlands and a bunch of other destinations. The USA, we've also been able to get down from $16 down to just $10, similar with Australia and Canada. And all of these should get to you significantly faster than before also, which is always good. And we've added a much cheaper express service with really great tracking on them also if you need to get things in a rush. And all of this literally wouldn't have happened without your amazing support. With more and more of you ordering and supporting us by buying through the shop, it means that we are literally able to go to these companies and negotiate better and better rates with how much we are sending internationally. So thank you so much for that. 
Finally, as you're aware, it is of course a Black Friday and we wanted to do some actual deals for you this year to show our appreciation. So we're gonna be doing 10% off site-wide with the code that I will link down below. This video might actually come out before Black Friday technically starts for us, but if you're watching this video, then I will ensure that the code works for you. So yeah, 10% off everything, and we don't do any of that crappy practice of putting prices up beforehand just to make it seem like we did a good deal or anything like that. I absolutely hate that. So 10% off everything, the EP Lite or the EP1 or our PoE boards, ESP32 boards, but also the Home Assistant Green, Sky Connect, all of the Acara and Shelly products that we sell now too. So please use that code and enjoy and have a good holidays and thank you so much as always for the incredible, incredible support. And that's about it for this video. I never really thought I'd make a video about the interesting subject that is international shipping, but there we go. Just wanted to give you all an update on everything that I and the team have been working on and we do very much take your feedback on board and try to improve as best we can. I think these are all really big improvements that you were going to absolutely love. Thank you for your feedback. It's really helping us to improve and make everything better for everyone. It's been a really busy few weeks actually and all this stuff just happened to finally come together at the last moment for us, which was really, really cool. Anyways, do let me know your thoughts down below. I love reading the comments as always. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in our next regularly scheduled video.